and welcome to another episode of Drilling Deeper. My name is Christina and we are here at the Oil Museum of Canada in front of this new exhibit and display. Today we're going to be looking at plank roads and transportation networks in and out of oil springs. In earlier episodes you may have heard me talk about the Long Canal and today we're going to focus on the plank road. Oil Springs is in a swamp and the oil business grew out of this swampy environment. And one of the major obstacles for any oil industry is how do you get the product to market? You have this product that you are harvesting from the ground, selling around the world, but transportation networks for it aren't always the easiest. And it takes creativity and ingenuity on the part of entrepreneurs to get this stuff out to the world. In 1854, the International Mining and Manufacturing Company was granted a royal charter to harvest the bitumens here in Oil Springs and refine asphalt out of the product to sell around the world to pave roads. Seems like a pretty logical idea, but in the swamps you have to build up those roads. And eventually the company fell into financial ruin due to lack of resources and transportation networks. But by 1858, there were new players in town in the name of James Miller Williams, who had himself a road built to the railheads in Wyoming. But other refiners and drillers were looking for different markets. They needed an easily safe transportation network to Sarnia, where the Black Star refinery was operating, and to the ports to ship it around the world. That's where we get Malcolm Cameron, George Durant and Associates. They raised $40,000 to build a plank road. Planks roads were very popular in this part of the country and in the southern United States as they allowed transportation through the swamps. There was white oak all over this community and they raised the money and started in late 1858 to chop down the white oaks and lay stringers and 10-foot boards. There were portable sawmills dragged along the route to process the wood. It was six inches thick, the planks, and they were 10 feet wide. And it ran from here to Sarnia. Now, if you take a look down here, you can actually see some of the original planks that we have preserved here in the museum. And if you notice, they are a bit thicker than the six inches that was recommended. And this is because at later construction dates, they realized that the heavy wear and tear of horse-drawn wagons and oil tankers did chew up the roads quite a bit. Traveling along these roads, though, was not for the faint of heart. They were extremely bumpy, dusty, covered in the smells of horse manure and oil. Every mile, there was an offcut. This offcut or bypass was used since the road was only 10 feet deep or 10 feet wide, you couldn't travel in both directions. Right of way was given to the oil tankers running from oil springs to the port of Sarnia. So if you saw an oil tank wagon, the rules of the road were to pull off to the side at an offcut, wait for them to pass, and then you may go forward. Now, this was also a toll road. There were three toll gates uh, on this road where you had to pay the fees. Fees ranged in price from five cents to 15 cents, depending on the number of people that you were transporting, the types of goods that you were transporting, and the number of horses that you were transporting. Interestingly enough, ministers and members of the clergy were able to travel the roads for free. This was one of the busiest highways in North America at this period of time. In 1866, this highway from oil springs and Petrolia to the ports in Sarnia transported 40,000 horse-drawn vehicles and was able to make a profit of over $5,000 in one year alone. This was something that was tremendous in this area, and this Toll road and plank line operated until 1924 when the last of the toll booths closed. So for almost a hundred years, plank roads enabled easily accessible transportation networks throughout Lambton County and the swamps. If you want to see the planks yourself 
or hear more of the stories associated with the Plank Road that still exist today, even though it is now covered in asphalt, as a major thoroughfare within Lambton County, we encourage you to come to the Oil Museum of Canada in Oil Springs to see all of this history for yourself.